Psych. Totally said I was going to be at the entrance of the next episode. Nope, we're going to do the secret level. Whoa! <laughs> so we're flying, which is probably good considering what just happened. I remember this level. This is really cool. I think if you kill enough of these bastards, you end up with um, a bunch of steps that appear down the middle here. And then even more shit to deal with, so good luck with that. I'm going to use this for a while, try and... Oh, apparently control is not down, it's shoot. That makes sense. Uh, trying to even out the amount of mana we use. 42% health is commented to say that, in fact, the cleric's weapon, even though this does do a reasonable amount of damage. Um, no, apparently you just... Uh, there we go. Interesting. Um, it does do a lot of damage. It uses proportionally basically more mana than any other characters, any other character classes. Um extra third level weapon. There's a lot of mana right here, and I'm tr ooh, trying not to pick too much up. A door opened on the Forsaken Outpost. I think that's the castle. Right? <laughs> Who knows? I mean, back in the day, you probably would have actually read the screen and looked at the map and done things like that. Not I. So this map was not quite as, uh, quite as excellent as I was expecting it to be, but it wasn't quite as scary as I was expecting it to be either, so there is that. We'll fly around a bit. I mean, these wings of wrath are going to last forever. Cool. Well, let's go. The Forsaken Outpost is one of them, so that's probably enough information to figure out where we should be going. Uh, it's not the swamp. It's not this castle, is it? Excuse me. I'm teleporting in while I'm talking. Extremely rude. Uh, maybe it's the one through here? I'm actually having a little bit of trouble remembering the layout of all these things. So we'll press into this. We do get dragged down by that, which is pretty nice. So this is the Caves of Circe. Uh, Forsaken Outpost? <laughs> Hello? This is back here. This is a Shadow Wood. Pretty sure there's only three maps here. I'm, I'm not going mad, am I? There's the swamps of gross goo. Can't get out. Interesting. Um, there's this one. And then there's the... Well, I guess... I don't know. Let's just go Let's go into each one that we remember the position of. Uh, and see what it's called. And walk around with our, primary, uh, our individual first weapon. This is called Wastelands. So, I mean, which one's the Forsaken Outpost again? It wasn't that, was it? <clears throat> Just occurred to me that could have been the name of the secret level. We're learning. Um, at least we're giving the impression that we're learning. Sacred Grove. Well, it's not. That's interesting. So, what is the Forsaken Outpost? <coughs> I don't know. It could be in a different hub. Right? I mean, who knows? Let's check what this one's called, because woe betide, uh, woe betide me. It would be typical of me to go in here and find it. This is called Darkmere. So we'll fly around Darkmere a little bit. Because I would have assumed that like this was the Forsaken Outpost right here. You know? There's a switch. Um, but I'm pretty sure that this just takes us to the Caves of Cirs. Oh, well, we can fly now, so we should check out around here and see if there's anything interesting. Uh, in, I guess, these. Like, it's entirely possible that they've put a, a passageway. In fact, interestingly, there is a thing here, which is an Afrit. Well, I was kind of hoping for more than that. That's another thing that you could do, is you could make, make a wall not show up on the map, and then when you look at the map, it looks like it goes on forever, but it does not. No. No, no, no. Well, this is no use. I don't want to be here. I was kind of half expecting there to be some sort of secret tunnels through there, but... I'm not surprised that there was not. So where does this take us? Caves of Circe again. Hmm. I do not know where the Forsaken Outpost is. And no doubt uh, there are comments happening right now whilst I talk, but of course, you're in the future. I have not got the benefit of being in the future, like you people who are probably flying around in your 
flying cars and your hoverboards <clears throat> and watching Jaws in 3D and, you know, basically having a whale of a time, but me here stuck in the past with my, you know, very low polygon gameplay. I have no chance, basically. I have no idea where it's going to be. I'm just trying various of the things that I've walked through in the past. But look, there's only... Oh, I don't need that. Um, there's only three styles of these. So it's hard to imagine that there's more maps. Holy crap. Apparently we haven't killed everything, so there's that. Honestly, not that bothered by killing everything. It's not doom. Uh, things do to some randomly spawn. This goes back to the shadow wood, right? Yeah. Well, I could unprofessionally Google it. I, I have a feeling the Forsaken Outpost is a future level, but uh, far be it from me to hexen. Forsaken Outpost. Yeah, that. Thanks, Google, for knowing what I mean before I say it. Hub 4. Okay. So, we are learning. That is the entirety of that secret level, then, I believe. Well, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. No, we might as well go through. Um, that's it. Not quite as exciting as the other one. Doesn't quite have the same puzzle aspect, the same finding multiple... Well, there's this one, of course, which is called the Hyperstyle. As we can see, it is presumably underneath something, but it doesn't really seem underneath anything. And we'll jump through. Your mind, still reeling from your encounters within the Hyperstyle, you stagger toward... No, I'm not really staggering. I'm bolting uh, a huge amount of confidence and um, swagger. You swagger towards what you hope is a way out. Things seem to move faster and faster. Your vision blurs and begins to fade. As the world collapses around you, the brightness of a teleportal engulfs you, a flash of light, and then you climb wearily to your feet and drink tea. You stand atop a high tower, and from below come the screams of the damned. You step forward, and instantly the sound of demonic chanting chills your blood. By all the gods of death, what place have you come to? By all the gods of pain, how will you ever find your way out? Not really quite sure what the sort of basic um, storyline is. Me. And I may yet be merciful. We have two or three again, pieces of race to be not. There are little. Whoa! So, this, uh. <laughs> Let's talk about scripting. One of the things that the script does here is to make a solid wall passable. These are solid walls. It wasn't really solid to begin with, but you can make something that is normally passable. Oh shit. We're gonna get these ones that start um, shooting back as well, which is not what I'm looking for. Ow. Fuck. Try and get rid of basically anything that we can. <laughs> um, you can make a solid wall passable. I mean. The wall has to be passable by default, but you can make it impassable for both people and projectiles, which is how it suddenly shot me. Um, it was probably shooting me all along, because it could presumably see through the wall. Um, there's only so much you can do with an engine like this. I am burning through my crystal vials pretty outrageously quickly already. Uh, I'm going to use this. doesn't really help me with these, but it might help me with things like this. Almost one shot them. Wow. Nope. Uh, I'd like to use it on those up there. This one could be used to keep these things at bay. Oh, yeah, shoot up there. That's no problem. I would like to be able to maybe drain some health from them, but I suspect that is wishful thinking because as soon as I try, they're going to put their shield up and I end up losing more health than I gained. I apologize if this is making me ow, dizzy. It's making me slightly dizzy. A little bit nauseated. That is extremely cool. See how that sort of opened whilst I was fighting? And it's super dark in there. This is very interesting. Get some mana, uh, health out of these Ettins. Right, let's see if we have the range on this to do any damage to these things. We do. We actually have to hit the damn thing. Eight mana, I believe, for each one of these shots. 
no fault. So we're not being quite so penalized. If, apparently if we don't see a burst of flame, we didn't hit. Ooh, use some health. Nearly became a cropper of my own uh, failure to pay attention just now. We'd be doing this a lot if I didn't keep using these crystal vials, so I'm going to keep using them. Green mana helps a lot. If I get up here, I might be able to use my staff against these things. I'm stuck. Because I don't think we have the range on this to get over. Oh, we'll try it. Yikes! These bishops uh, have... The sound they make is a backwards recorded voice, which is uh, very cliche, but very cool. Uh, one of the things that they say backwards is succumb to us, heretic. Succumb to us, heretic. Um, but the other thing they say, I never figured out. What I did do was um, I opened up in the deep the uh, editor that I had for Doom Doom Engine games, including Duke 3D, which is why I assumed originally that Duke 3D was a Doom Engine game. Apparently it's not. Um, you could extract the sounds from the WAD file. Just dancing around here. It's like I'm playing Isaac again. Cool. Plenty of mana to keep us going. A bit of health to keep us going. I'm going to ignore those for now because I've got a lot to concentrate on in here. Hoping to get some health out of them so we don't have to keep using our... Uh... Not everything they say is back as well. I'm pretty sure that sound you just heard is just a noise. Ooh. Very cool earthquake effect. Just shake the screen. Okay. Why not? And the lights come on. Another scripted event, as I like to talk about. I don't think you could change the appearance of sprites in Doom, except for, like, if you kill them. Uh, anything that was a torch remained a torch. You couldn't switch them on or anything. This is outrageous, so let's use this. Hopefully we can get some splash damage done here. The trajectory of these shots was um, fairly unique as well to hex them, the way they spiral towards you. Obviously copied several times since then. Probably not, you know, the first thing. To, I don't want to go around saying Hexen was the first thing, uh, for, first game to do everything, but lots of things were, you know, new, if not unique. Do you ever play um, Quake 2? I think one of my favourite weapons in computing game history was the railgun from Quake 2. Mostly because of the helical effect that it had when you fired it. It travelled instantly. Uh, the slug, as it was called. And it left behind a, a trail of particle effects, which was very cool. Hello. I just want to be out of here. We should be out of here. So here's a um, very excellent piece of game design, at least back in these days. Fucking hell. Pardon my French, but shit the bed. Does the word merde mean shit in the verb sense, or is it only in the... Uh, only in the interjection sense? I wish these things would die more easily, quite honestly. Tried to dodge through all that, failed, but got somewhere. Oh god. Do you want to see all that again? Oh, he's going to talk to me again. I'm not a fan of this. Worship me, and I may yet be merciful. Then again, <laughs> I'm scared. Not. I don't really want to jump down, I can't fly anymore. So I'm going to have to keep dancing because this goes walk throughable before. <laughs> It goes away, which is... Oh, come on now. I think I might, for the sake of everybody's sanity, cut here. Uh, and I'll see you when I've cleaned out basically the rest of that massive hall full of enemies. Oh, all right. I think I've pretty much... Well, I've cleared the main chamber. There's still some enemies down here. Um, I should save scum it. In fact, I'm going to because... No, I don't want to do it all again. Uh, there's a fine line between save-scumming it and, you know, being 
being smart about it. I'd like to think I'm on the being smart side of that line. There's apparently another bishop I have yet to address. Can't believe how much how many shots it takes. Heavens, that's like five of those things. That's a lot of shots, I'm just saying. Let's try and kill these things. They can shoot, of course, through bars because it would be very, very easy. Maybe nice to the player if they could not. So this uh, hasn't hit if you don't see multiple flames. That was not very smart. I'm just going to keep using these crystal vials. They do seem to be keeping me in a, a reasonably sensible supply of them. I have a lot of stuff in my inventory as well, so I should probably think about using those sometimes. This Dark Servant is probably going to help at the end of this um, chapter, because I remember fully well what boss we're about to fight. I say about to, we have some way to go before that happens. Um, it took me about 10 minutes, by the way. Uh, just looking at the timer on my audacity window. Approximately 10 minutes between me saying I'll put a cut in and me coming back. Oh, hello. So, you see this one here? This one is like the centaur. Like, no, it's going to shoot me as well. <laughs> it's hard. This game is, as I was trying to speak before, I was rudely interrupted by the game. Ridiculously hard. Okay, it's stuck on something. Okay. I think when it's shooting you, its shield is not counted as being up, so you can do damage to it. But, uh, so I don't like it, particularly. There's stuff in there, and I believe the stuff in here actually gets randomised and respawns, which is really cool. I mean, that's a cool idea anyway, to have done it in, um, in this era. It's just tremendous. So we're going to look to be zoning as soon as possible so that we can... Um... Hello. Save without save scumming, if you see what I mean. So I believe... Oh, I don't want to pick that up. Well, I don't have much choice. I believe this will start opening things up. Like that, for example. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and smash the windows. And then after it's there in. Please. Good. Get in. Get in! <laughs> Holy crap. I did hear one. I didn't realise it was behind me. Good grief. Uh, let's get our box flask used. We should probably pull these switches because we don't know what's good for us. We'd like the mana as well, if you don't mind. I'm guessing they open up something here, so... Ooh, a bit scary. I'm just going to keep doing it. Uh... I do enjoy this breaking windows thing. Well, now I think about it, you should be pretty familiar with the idea of an impassable thing becoming passable because obviously when you hit these they break. I honestly don't remember whether these are built into the game or whether each one has its own individual script. I said I used to play with Deep, the Doom Enhanced Editing Program. Uh, which is what got me into mapping in the first place to be honest, but it was really interesting to see how the game, like the creators of the game I mean, you can imagine that when they were making the game, yeah, let's just open this up. Um, they they could write in anything that they needed. So if they needed scripting and they needed a behaviour from a script, they could just write in the functionality that the script would use in order to do things. But you know, then they had this sort of blank slate problem, like analysis paralysis, where they knew that they needed to. They knew that they wanted to make a level, but they didn't know what sort of things it was going to be doing. Until they invented... Hey! I was turning around thinking there's probably an Essing behind me by now. Just a uh, mild heart attack, don't worry. Um, but they would have gone... Come up with an idea and then probably... I don't know whether the level designers and the... You know, the people who wrote the game engine were the same people. I expect that there was a crossover, um, but I mean, these days, in this world, when I'm when I'm at work, I work with the web, and 
I have previously worked in a situation where I was the back-end developer and there were front-end developers and the back the front-end developers, not even developers, the front-end designers would create something and then we'd have to go, how the hell do you want me to do that? That's not how the world works. Stuff up. Yeah, all this stuff just spawns out of it, that's really cool. See how it flew up and fell down? I've lit I'd never noticed that before. That's really cool. Um, scared of going in there. I'm going to press everything in here while I still can. So I'm wondering whether there was a similar dynamic, if you see what I mean, for the people in the past, in this situation, going, you know, I... Ooh, okay. Fair enough. Um, I want to be able to do this, and then the developers go, we don't, you know, we can't access that particular piece of data at this point. We can't, um, you know, we can't implement that using the current state of play of the code base, we don't have to refactor this out here, which just happens all the time. You know, the requirement to refactor in order to implement some what should seem like trivial functionality. If you've ever worked with any form of software development, you will know that you do not sim one does not simply, you know? Uh, also I said to myself, whilst um redoing the bit we failed at. Should probably use more flechettes. So I'm gonna get them out. Yeah. Oh, let them uh, let them eat cake. You're technically uh shielded apparently. Very well. Ow. I got shot backwards into the uh crystal vial which healed me from the shot. Very good. I think those are just filtering through from somewhere else. That's very annoying noise. That's why we didn't use flechettes. Because they suck balls. Especially against these. I, uh, I assume they have the same problem with the centaurs as the firestorm does, which is the centaurs just block all of the damage sort of repeatedly. I'm not going to pull that because I know what it does. It opens these. This is dangerous. It's all shit. We need to get in there somehow. Playing the stealthy game at the moment. Yeah. It's, this is um, the original Gears of War, of course. Get behind cover. Wait. Try and get that centaur aggroed, and then we can bring it up here. Bad. Very bad. 15 damage that took. I feel like I'm actually underpowered. One of the tropes that, um, when I was a kid, and I was playing computer games, my dad would say to me, you know, the enemies are strong, but you are the strongest unit in the game. By necessity. You, know, you have to be able to beat everything else. Or it would not be a game, it would just be a, a slog, it would be a, a constant... Ooh. Oh, fuck. I thought I was using crystal vials, but I wasn't. <laughs> uh, quartz fastest. You know what I'm saying. But I, I generally think in this situation that if I was the strongest unit in the game, I would not be having nearly as much trouble as I am right now. I'm tempted to save it because we're going to have to do all that shit again. I will. I'm going to save it in this one. I'm going to die long. Oh, shit, isn't it? Run away! <laughs> coward! You call me a coward. Yeah, so I'm a coward. Look, it's not cowardice, it's tactics. I'm retreating. I really ate shit just now. Did you see that? I'm trying to get this thing in between me and them. Please. How are you not taking damage from this? Yeah, go over there. Deal with it. I don't want to use my flechettes because it's going to be shit. I think, by the way, that when they've got their shields up, you can just go around behind them. That does work. If you can manage it, you know? Right, so we're gonna go down here. Shoot the shit out of these mofos. We've got that one down. Hide in here, wait for the barrage to pass. Gonna need some more HP, let's let's take it. We have five of these, which I think did full health, I think we discovered that. And we have one um No, we didn't pick up another crater of might which is something I very much like because it would basically allow me to 
use my actual weapons without too much concern for it. Uh, stop taking damage, please. Stop doing damage to me, if you wouldn't mind. All these trees have broken, by the way. <laughs> Probably because I shot them. You can break them. In fact, I think I have to break those trees. Because there's a switch behind them. That opens up the stairs somewhere? Well, let's set those going. That doesn't fill me with confidence at all. If that makes those go... You are not taking damage from this, which is preposterous. Oh, that makes these ones go. Not the, uh... So they're taking a piss. Taking a piss right now. <laughs> Hopefully it's going this way. It is. Very nice. So that opens those two, which go pretty slowly, so we have some time. Good, these two are both dead. And then the one over here activates those two. Oh, they just keep going. Very well. Oh, they're all going. Oh god. So cool. We've never seen this sort of thing before. You have to remember that. Rotating walls? What are you talking about? How would anyone implement such a thing? Of course the limitations of the engine. Like, well that's a that's a thing, for example. Let's say the game designers say can we make a like a sliding bridge? No. It's already been established that you, these have to be the full height of the thing. They have to be impassable walls. We can't have the uh concept of a full height, uh, of a half height moving object in Hexen, even though these days we would take such a thing for granted and assume that you could have like a rope swing or something awesome like that. One of these does something. Like this, I know for a fact that there is a portal here. So I think all the stairs down, one of the two. So we're just going to keep hacking away at this. We're getting to a decent end for this particular episode, I think. Oh, here we go. Now, this might be... This is where I got the last piece of quietness, which is the, um, the fighter's final weapon. The sword, which fires, I think, poisonous shots. Or just flame shots, I forget. An issue of being colorblind. So you can't tell if something's meant to be poisonous, or just fire. Like, I wouldn't have not have told you that this uh, serpent staff was firing poisonous stuff. I mean, I know that they hurt, and that's basically as far as it gets. There is no piece of Wraith Verge here. So we're going to have to keep going. Uh, oh, hello. <laughs> that's, um, that's new. Oh, here it is. <gasps> here it is. Wraith Verge assembled. I have seen this weapon, and I'm pretty sure I've seen it in action. It's basically the BFG, I think. From Doom. In that you fire it and then there's like a shitload of things that just fly around the screen and kill everything, which is amazing and fun and brilliant. Let's go outside. Let's see if anything has happened. Take that apart, that gives you some HP, which is valuable. Uh, this seems like a good place to end it. I've gone on a little bit, um, but we have assembled Wraith Verge, so I'll leave it there with you wondering what Wraith Verge looks like, and no doubt we will be using the shit out of it to try and get the final boss of this chapter defeated. But until the next episode, thank you for watching, and I'll see you then.